Call the meeting to order. I will court, uh, call the meeting to order at 7.03 for the September uh, 21st uh, NIMCOG meeting. Well, like the records show, we have members participating both in person and remotely, so all votes will be roll call votes. And we can uh, kick off. <laughs> Just to bring up the agenda. Yeah. Oh, here, sorry. Well, yeah, what you do, roll. <laughs> Here. Mary McFadden. Pat Wilkins. Here. Colin McDougall. George Averroes. Here. Allison Bennett. Phil Thibault. Here. Jerry Pachette. Here. Chuck Wachowicz. Chuck Searing. Mr. Morrow. Here. Steve Pemelis. Here. Jane Wellman. Here. Jim Duffy. Ron Cohen. Steve O'Neill. Yeah. Katarina Calabota. Anita Conakari Wynn. Here. Darren Weiss. Yeah. Jim Zelda. Excellent. So first we have the approval of minutes for August 17th. Do you have a motion, please? So moved. Second. So um, <clears throat> moved by James, seconded by Darren. Good. Uh, Katrina? Andrew Deloria. Aye. Chris Treeson? Aye. Pat Wilkins? Aye. Birds are Aye. Phil Devo. Yes. Danny Moore. Aye. Jerry Burchette. Aye. Chad Wachowicz. Hey, Chuck, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Chuck. Aye. Joyce <laughs> Morrow. Aye. Dane Wellman. Aye. Steve O'Neill. Staying. Anita Tonakarwin. Aye. Darren Lee. Aye. Excellent. Uh, moving on, we have the election of NIMCOG officers. Thanks to everyone who submitted nominations. Um, I know a few folks have declined, I believe. Um, just I was copied on some of those and I learned some of them. Have, Katrina, do we have a set ballot, as it were? We do. The one that's on the screen should be the most up to date ballot. Okay. Great. Any this other questions? I withdrew before. I know I run an issue. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't want to have a chance. Okay. All right. Is there any other? Um, I guess we'll open it up for chair. Are there any nominations from the floor? I'm going to withdraw my name at this time. Okay. And um, I will withdraw my name for the chair. This is... I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently not that bad, Pat. <laughs> Make them pay. So, Carl, that leaves only one race. Let's check it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, I want to assist clerk. Hmm. Chris, since you were sort of just elected assisting clerk, would you be interested in? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll withdraw there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just <laughs> all right. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll take uh yeah I'll, I'll withdraw my name from the assistant treasurer there. I'll take door number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we need a motion. Unless there's any nominations from the floor. Any other nominations for any office? Hearing none, I guess we'll have, I guess, I think, can we do one motion? Can we hey, do mostly, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
I make a motion that we approve as presented here. Andrew for our chair, Anita for vice chair, Jerry for treasurer, Jane for assistant treasurer, Jerry McBride for clerk, Chris Tebow for assistant clerk, and Pat Wilges for N N N P O representative. Second. Motion made and seconded. Katrina. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So, uh, Andrew Deloria. Aye. Chris Rebo. Aye. Pat Wojas. Aye. George Zahra-Lewis. Aye. Phil Tebo. Yes. Andy Rourke. Aye. Jerry Burchett. Aye. Chuck Walkovich. Aye. Joyce Morrow. Aye. Dave Wellman. Aye. Steve O'Neill. Aye. Anita Conan Bergman. Aye. Mary Weeks. Aye. Well, thanks everyone who put up their names, and I, I appreciate the uh, council support. I, um, it's, it's been a it was a challenging year. I'm looking forward to a much easier year this year. <laughs> uh, so, with that, let's start our new year. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So, Jenny, I, I guess this is your item. Yes, it is. Hello, everybody. Hi, Jenny. Nice to see you. Sorry, I cannot be in the in the room room with you, mm -hmm. but thanks for having me on the Zoom room. Um, I really appreciate um, the opportunity to find a time to schedule an officer's retreat. So now that we've done our election, what I'd like to move into, as I mentioned in my update uh, previously, when we were talking about strategic planning, the first step in that process would be scheduling an officer's retreat. And part of that will be to um, talk strategically about, you know, where we're going with the organization, setting some goals and priorities, and setting forth a whole framework for how we're going to do some strategic planning over the course of the next year. So I just want to, uh, we don't have to schedule the retreat right now, but I wanna let you know that I will be following up to schedule the retreat with the officers, the newly elected officers. And I'm glad to answer any questions about that. Any question? Any question? Oh, go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman, to you, Jenny. Um, what are you thinking of in terms of time frame? That, uh, that, well, in terms of the scheduling of the retreat? Okay. Yeah, I mean, as soon as possible, actually. So I'll be following up tomorrow. <laughs> to find we'll see you on Friday. No, <laughs> not, not, not for Friday, but, um, but just to get on okay. the, the scheduling of that because it is somewhat important to set forth the course of, of how we're doing things in our yeah. operation. And I'd like to get that planning work uh, going as soon as possible. So the officers meeting to be in alignment on those next steps is very critical to that process. Yeah, I'm all in. I'm all in. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Any other questions? Ooh. All right, moving right along then. I'll bring back up the agenda if you can. Yeah. Office space subcommittee, this sounds contentious. No, it, it shouldn't be. <laughs> um, this came up at the last meeting where the office space you're some of you are sitting in right now, our lease will be up next year, as you probably know, because you, you voted to, to do the lease extension. But I think that it would be uh, wise and practical to look at um, the office space and the needs and where the organization is at to determine the next steps before either embarking on another longer term lease in the same building or uh, looking elsewhere. So I would like to form a subcommittee to help me with uh, making some of those decisions that we would then recommend back to the council at a future meeting. Um, this was actually something that I believe uh, one of the council members had asked for as a follow-up item at the prior meeting. So I wanted to put it on this agenda to put it up top um, and get the process rolling as, uh, sooner rather than later. So I'm looking for people to join <laughs> my subcommittee. <laughs> Thank you. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. So Steve, I didn't see the other person who volunteered. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. How many people are there? Yeah, if, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll join too. I'm gonna, I, I, my background would be moved. Would three do you, Jenny, or do you want more? Uh, 
Three is perfect. Three is perfect. Thank you. That's what we're Anybody doing. Anybody else who wants to jump in though at any time, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, requirements on how many people need to be on this committee. I'm just looking for folks to bounce ideas off of and explore um, sort of our space needs and, and how to move forward. Thank you. Just to throw out the idea of access to commercial appraisals and commercial space and what the cost is just worth using. Right. Provided a lot of that the last time around. Appreciate that assistance this time around. Thank you. Right. Cool. All right. Very productive thus far. All right. What's next? I apologize. I don't have the agenda handy in my email for some reason. Um, uh, all right. On to uh, Bert. If he's there. We have that we just checked account. We're in the process of transitioning from two enterprise checking accounts. Um, so when we matter of fact, the checks were written out of that account. Uh, <coughs> and be it be it in a beat show up tomorrow. Uh, because this is done before the this is done before the check run. Uh, so our total cash is a million five thousand nine hundred fifty-four dollars. We have some restricted cash, and we all have a count of three hundred four thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars. I anticipate accounts receivable of one hundred twenty-one thousand four hundred forty dollars, giving us a net cash total, including receivables, of one million one seventy-seven four hundred fourteen dollars. I presented checks to Jerry on Tuesday, which are really dated for tomorrow, for $12,676. Uh, I anticipate expense, another expense, more expenses between now and the next time we meet of $43,338. Additionally, another $96,000 in payroll. Uh, Giving us a total account payable of one hundred fifty thousand fourteen dollars. Uh, a total warrant actually one hundred fifty two thousand fourteen dollars. Net cash total of one hundred one million twenty five thousand four hundred dollars. Other outstanding obligations totaling two hundred forty two thousand nine hundred seventy one dollars, leaving us a net cash total of less. Uh, others, other outstanding tables of seven hundred eighty-two thousand four hundred seventy-one. Thank you. Questions for Bert? I have a question. Please do. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, Bert. My friend. Um, when was the last time we audited our OPEB liability? Uh, it gets audited at the end of the audit. As a matter of fact, we'll be going through the audit. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. The field work is going to start up going through. And that's also done with the regular, with the general audit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in our past OPEB audit, did they apply GASB 75? Yes. Okay. I'm Thank not you. sure if it's 75. Is it actually 75? I think that it's the Medicare Part A. I always forget the numbers, but yes. Yeah. Well, we just got things for it. That's why I have oh, a question. Right. Thank you. Okay. That would be yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. Other questions? Hearing none. Andrew Deloria. Oh, we need a motion first. I appreciate the effort, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, I can assume that we accept the um, financial report as presented. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, motion by Jane, seconded by, was it Chris or Jerry? Chris. All right, Katrina. <laughs> Andrew DeLoria. Aye. Trevo. Aye. Matt Williams. Aye. George Zaharulis. Aye. Phil Tebow. Yes. Danny Rourke. Aye. Jerry Burchett. Aye. Chuck Lockridge. Aye. Joyce Morrow. Aye. Jane Wellman. Aye. Steve O'Neill. Aye. Anita Tonantan Lynn. Aye. Darren Wayne. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, going back to the agenda. Should we, should we tell Mary that she's the clerk? Mary, good news, you won. <laughs> <laughs> or Ben, whatever, however you look at it. <laughs> All right, personnel committee report. I'm not sure who's representing us. Okay, I guess I can take that. Um, that. I, as you uh, I saw in, uh, in Jenny's uh, executive director's report, we have two hires. 
uh, that will be coming on board fairly soon. So I just want to talk a little bit about them. Um, first was the transportation planner who is going to begin on Monday, the 26th, uh, Jessica Belanger. Uh, we had two candidates for that position. Um, Jessica came across as a more confident <laughs> and articulate candidate. She has experience with MAPC almost two years there. So she does have a planning background, a master's degree from Tufts in urban and environmental policy planning. Um, she's a demonstrated knowledge of the NEMPOD communities, which will help her hit the ground running. Um, she stretched as an objective to share resources across the region, which is one of, one of the things that I, I like to hear about everybody in, in NEMPOD. Um, so she's early in her career as a transportation planner, but there was unanimous agreement uh, from the <coughs> committee, which consists of myself, uh, Bill, and Jerry. Um, so uh, I think we all thought she'd be a good fit for NEMPOD. Uh, do you two have any other anything else to add? No, I don't wish to belabor it anymore. You, okay. You, you fit it pretty much. Yeah, we'll be more time. And then the, the, our new sustainability planner, who is going to begin on October 11th, Daniela Garcia Moreno. Um, for this position, we had three candidates. Um, Daniela was clearly the best fit of the three that we interviewed. She was also engaging, articulate, willing to accept challenges and learn from her successes and failures, which is always a good thing. Uh, willing to be collaborative with other members of NEMPOG as needed. Uh, she has a strong focus on maintaining and enhancing green space and aware of the differences um, in by demographics and culture on how that um, different how that's going to impact planning and implementation and communication um, across uh, the the region. Um, I think uh, for this uh, for this interview, Jerry was not available. So it was just uh, Phil and myself that uh, did the interview with uh, Jenny and Justin. Um, who are confident that she'll succeed at, at NEMPOG. Uh, again, she's just beginning her career. She just finished her um, degree at Cornell in environmental and sustainability um, concepts with a minor in climate change. So I think that's going to be very timely for what, we, what we're talking about across all the uh, communities in NEMPOG. And so we're looking forward to meeting um, meeting Daniela next month. So, Bill, anything else you want to add to that? That's my report. Awesome, thank you, Jenny. Anything, uh, Jenny, anything to add? Just a big thank you to Pat and Jerry and Phil for helping us with the interviews and for a really good process. Um, of getting to know different applicants and um, you know asking some really great questions along the way and really enhancing the outcome, I think. So I just want to appreciate your service on the personnel committee. Thank you. There was nothing else to add to. I'm excited that we have new staff. So <laughs> I, I was going to say that next, but I'll say it now. <laughs> I'm sure the rest of the staff is excited about the staff too. Uh, all the way. And see some nodding heads with between the Chris's. So, <laughs> right, all right. Is, is there a vote required here, or do we have anything to approve? No. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Great update. And now it's on to Jenny. Anything you want to highlight from your report, or the self-explanatory? Everything is self-explanatory, but I would like to highlight the various things in my report, please. Please. Um, and probably answer some questions if anybody has them, of course. I'll stop at any time if somebody, um, somebody will have to tell me if you have a question because I can't see everybody. Um, so first I just wanna highlight and I want to commend Trevanti and Justin for their work on um, working towards a new community engagement and outreach and participatory process for the building of the next regional transportation plan. It's a really critical thing to change the way that we do outreach in a lot of our programming. Um, some of you know, I'm here actually in Washington, DC. Today, I met with um, officials from the Department of Transportation and the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. And the most critical thing to be working on as an MPO and a regional planning agency across the country is equity 
and community engagement strategies and putting that embedding that into all of our programming and all of our work. So we, we do have um, a lot to do on that, but I'm very excited for Shervanti's efforts to really think, be thoughtful about that process. And also for, for all of the staff who've been participating, we've sort of started a subgroup of people looking at community engagement and participatory strategies um, in ways throughout the organization that we're gonna do some sharing and learning um, and hopefully some changes will come from that. But it's starting with the regional transportation plan and I just think that's worth spotlighting. Of course, there will be more updates to that um, over the course of the, uh, really in the, in the next month um, after the MPO meeting, we'll have more dates and information to share about that process. So thank you. Um, the other thing I wanna spotlight is uh, thanks to Chris Curry, who, as you know, if, as the transit planner um, and who provides a lot of support to the LRTA has completed an ADA paratransit application review, which was a very long process and really provided some extra support to the LRTA when they really needed it. And again, in the spirit of creating equitable access to transportation, that is a key element to it. And so any support that NIMCOG staff could provide as part of that process is really key. So thank you to Chris Curry. Um, then I wanna mention that in weights and measures, um, the, uh, the, the work that the two folks on our team do related to weights and measures is, is quite a lot. Uh, some of you might know that, but others may not. It is, a, it is quite arduous, it is very physical work, and it is really in the field. Um, one, of our, one of the staff people, Mo, is, that is what he does every day. And David Tilton um, does that part of the time and also supports transportation planning um, in a variety of different ways. But David Tilton, I just wanna commend his work in helping me to put together a proposal that was responsive to the town of Westford's really long, long time request to be part of our weights and measures program. And he put together a great proposal with really clear costs, um, working in concert with Bert um, to basically say, here's what we could provide as a service starting in January. And here's how much it will cost starting in the next fiscal year, which Westford is now um, you know, addressing as part of their, their, they'll put that on their special town meeting in, in this fall, as I understand it, and then we'll see what happens next. So we're, we're, I mostly want to express first to thank you to David for stepping up and for providing that um, proposal and following through with it, but also to uh, demonstrate to all of you that we're, we're trying our best to be responsive to requests for our assistance. Um, and following through with that was really, really important. Um, then I'm, uh, there's a bunch of events that are listed in my report. So I'll just tell you what they are. And if you have a question about them, please feel free to ask me. Um, one of them I mentioned, two of them I mentioned in my last report, which was I was scheduling the Northern Middlesex Stormwater Collaborative meeting. That is apparently an incredibly popular meeting and people are very excited to get back together. It's happening on September 28th. We're gonna talk about MS4 permitting and share some educational strategies with local communities. Um, of course, anybody's welcome to join. Um, there, is a, there seems to be a group of people who come to these meetings, but uh, we'll be posting all of the information about that meeting. I believe it's already posted. Um, so I, uh, I'm glad to see anybody else there participating. Similarly, the regional energy planning assistance that we provide all of our communities have scheduled a workshop for October 12th, which happens to be right after Daniela starts. So she'll jump right in and get moving on some of our training and assistance to our communities. I'm putting together a whole panel, but so far I've gotten a clean energy center from the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center has committed to being on that panel to discuss something very specific. And that specific mm -hmm. issue emerged from a survey that David Reiter had actually conducted back in the spring that I finally found the results of. So I'm trying again to be responsive to some of the training needs that came up uh, from our communities. And so this is uh, a panel that is coming up that I hope is helpful. Um, and then something totally different. Um, this Saturday, we are, I will be wearing jeans and very tall boots to go through who knows what kind of poison ivy um, mm -hmm. to help with a cleanup mm -hmm. and restoration effort um, in Lowell as part of a habitat restoration project that we are doing in partnership with 
Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust, um, Middlesex Community College, as well as other partners. And that's, that's happening this Saturday. Also, you're welcome to join if you want to come out and do some dirty work. Um, <laughs> Totally up to you, no pressure. Um, there is a waiver form though. So if you do want to attend, you have to fill out the waiver form first. <laughs> um, but it is this is work that's, that was funded by the National um, Fish and Wildlife Foundation. And we'd love to do a great job with that grant funding so that we can access more money because there's so much more need for repairing and restoring that area in Lowell. And I'm sure there's other areas as well as part of our greenways. Um, Next, I want to just uh, commend Chris Hayes, who's also here, um, for his work on a lot of housing planning and policy planning. He's really jumped head in on this work, and I'm very impressed by a lot of the results that we're seeing from those, not just the conversations in our communities, but also some results with our planning work. And um, just quickly, I mentioned the Westford housing plan last time, but the uh, Dunstable and Lowell housing production plans have now officially kicked off and we're really in a process of, of going through how long it will take us to complete that work, which will likely spread into a couple of, a couple of years, um, a little bit longer than perhaps we had projected, but we think that the results will be very, will have a really big impact. Um, and in the Lowell's case, will dovetail with their comprehensive planning process, which Chris is actually a part of as a resident of Lowell. So there's some exciting synergy between some citywide planning and our housing planning that we're proposing. Um, and then the last thing uh, that I wanna mention as an event, a couple of events coming up that I don't have the dates for, is uh, an ARPA webinar that I've been organizing with Health Resources in Action. I'm working on a date, but it will probably be in late October, early November. And also uh, the Sierra Club had reached out to me. There's part of a Northeast Climate Leaders Summit that they are planning in various places across the state and would like um, NIMCOG to be a per, you know, part of that group and of course on a panel. And so that will be, the date for that will also be forthcoming. That is actually going to be a weekend program. And the intent there is for training local leaders who are working in climate advocacy or climate planning. Um, we already talked about the staff, which we are so excited to bring on board. Um, and the other thing I wanna mention is that Justin and I have concluded meetings in all nine of our communities. It's really robust and interesting dialogue with all of our communities. I've been learning a great deal about some of the needs, some of the gaps, and some of the areas where we can grow as an organization and make some changes in the future. And I'm, I'm really excited um, to embark on some of that work. And I've also had a chance to reflect on what I think are some of the emerging top issues, which happen to be, the first of them happens to be housing. That seems to be an issue resonating in all of our communities with some really interesting opportunity to be strategic about re regional housing um, supply and demand and really creating a blueprint for how the region can move forward to address housing at all different income levels. And so we, I will be coming back with a, a stronger proposal on that and also working with other regional partners as part of that process, including the Lowell Plan and the Middlesex Three, um, where we've already embarked on some interesting, very preliminary conversations, um, but I need to Put a little more around that proposal before I talk with you about it. And um, I'll be coming back to you in the future on that. Uh, the second thing is clearly infrastructure needs, particularly around water and sewer. And I've already started some, in, um, some dialogue with the Congresswoman's office, Congre uh, Trehan, as well as um, others who have been working on this issue. And there's a lot going on with that particular topic. Already independent, well independent of NIMCOG, conversations that are happening with town managers, city manager, and others. And so I'd like NIMCOG to be at the table in those conversations because, because I know that that's very important to a lot of our, our other initiatives. The last topical area that seems to be, to have resonated as the highest or elevated would be um, regional collaboration and just finding other ways that NIMCOG can support our communities through more regional collaboration coordination and municipal services. We obviously work in weights and measures and we had done some work in an emergent, like the regional emergency call center, but there's other areas where there's some possibilities for some real impact 
Um, so that seems to be the, the third emergent area where we would like to explore. Um, I'm going to talk about MBTA communities and another agenda item, but that is also another area where we've, we've been already been doing a lot of preliminary work. So I'll look forward to telling you about that soon. And I'll just go back to you, Andrew, to see if anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Jenny on the report? Uh, Jenny, this is Jerry uh, from uh, Lowell. Um, just in the uh, you know, in, in the regional housing plans and we, you know, addressing regional housing needs, um, I would just hope that there would be some outreach and truly trying to address it as a a regional regional solution and not the urban center of Lowell being the regional solution. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what has come up in the past. And it's not just Lowell, it's the gateway communities in Massachusetts. And it's a lot of the other, the other suburbs in Massachusetts don't want to be part of the solution. They want a solution. They'll be happy to serve on committees to solve the solution, but they want the gateway cities to provide the actual solution. So anyway, just to keep that in mind, um, I will be a strong voice for the city of Lowell on that, and nobody can can question our diversity in housing and our housing uh, choices here in the city of Lowell when you compare it to the rest of the region. So again, just something to keep that in mind. I hear you. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Other questions? <laughs> Is um. I, I guess for the, was it the transit, or was it the paratransit application review? Um, so if, is there a, like a, a link for it, like that a, someone could apply for that? They were having trouble within the, say like my community or someone else's community here? Um, where would- Oh, with, with access? Yeah. Um, Andrew, through you, could we have Chris um, Curry please. answer that? Yeah, please. What? No. Chris, Chris, Curry, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was like, Different Chris, Chris. Yeah, no, no. There's, uh, there's been a lot of uh, Chris that go around. My ears perk up every time. So, um, Chris Curry, do you want to take that? Hi. Uh, yeah. Um, I've been doing the uh, reviews of the AD applications as they come in for the last six months because of a, a, a medical uh, um, leave of the gentleman that does it currently. Um, specifically, I, I didn't quite hear what the question was. Like, is there is there a link or an email where, like, if someone was having issues um, and they wanted to use this service or have an application, so would it just be your email that I would be giving them, or how would how would uh, how would they go through? Is there a link or is there some place that I can I I can get them that information so that that they can file an application? Well, you can always you can email me for sure, ccurry at nimcog.org. But we also have transportation access dot, at lrta.com, excuse me. So it's one word, transportation access at lrta.com. And that's our email address. And uh, I review those every week and, and make sure that uh, the applications are handled. The applications are also online at the lrta.com website. Okay. I just I I think that maybe some people might not know about them, so they might be just so. Uh, but but thank you for the information. You bet. Thank you. Thanks, Chris's yeah, comment. Other questions? Um, it's a comment from James for you, Mr. Chairman. To Please. Jenny, I just wanted to commend you for your report. Your executive director report is really complete. It's detailed. Um, it's amazing the work that you and the staff at NIMCOG are doing, and it's really wonderful to see the variety and the depth of the work that all the staff is doing. And so I appreciate all the work that went into this as well as your day-to-day -day jobs and, um, and the work. So that's my comment. Um, I support Jerry's regional housing comments as well, and um, that's conversations we're having at stay in Pittsburgh. That is support a regional 30% AMI. I'm sorry I missed that meeting with you. We'll touch base later. And then um, if you can, I would like to be involved in the uh, Sierra Club um, and the climate change stuff as well as housing. So thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anything else? All right, great, thank you. I wanna thank the many NIMCOG staff who helped to contribute to the director's report, which is what we're doing, every, what we're going to be doing every month. Um, so what you're, what you're reading is directly what people are working on and they're excited to share that work with all of you. So I'm glad to hear that it's of value. Thank That's you. That's awesome, thank you. That's amazing. All right, bring up the agenda. Next is a special project presentation by Jeff. So Jeff is going to uh, present on this item, Andrew, and he has a PowerPoint. We also shared in advance a draft of the plan uh, through a link to our website. Um, he's going to talk through the details of that um, and the different phases of the plan. I think he's standing up, I see him. Um, <laughs> And so I was just going to hand it over to him to let him take it on. Awesome, take it away, Jeff. All right, thanks. Hi, everybody, I'm Jeff Owen. I'm a regional planner here at NIMCOG and I've been working on this project since its beginning. It's fun, uh, next slide, please. Uh, it was funded by a grant from the Economic Development Administration to address the impact of COVID-19 on the regional economy and to build resiliency for future pandemic and health crises. The plan will also provide guidance for the development of the region's comprehensive economic development strategy. The, it focuses on four main areas of the economy healthcare, economic development, housing, and food security. Each of these four areas has several goals and recommendations, with a total of 79 actions identified in the plan. Uh, next slide. We won't go through most of these actions. Instead, I'm going to highlight some key issues and actions identified to address them. Um, development of the plan consisted of two phases. First phase documented the impacts of COVID on the four main focus areas and developed recommendations to address the immediate impacts of COVID. This was completed in late 2021 and submitted to the EDA in January of this year. Phase two focuses on building resiliency in these four areas for future pandemics and health crises. On September 1st, <laughs> NIMSBOG Comprehensive Economic Building Strategy Committee, who's been reviewing drafts and providing guidance to us throughout this uh, the ERRP development process, voted unanimously to recommend the Council of Feed Phase two for submittal to the EDA. Next slide. Uh, the first issue area we addressed is healthcare. One significant problem was lack of adequate space during the fight from COVID. This affected availability of hospital beds as well as testing and vaccination sites. Outdoor locations were set up in the region, but unfortunately, several of those had significant shortcomings. As such, we're recommending identifying locations for emergency spillover testing and vaccination sites in case of a future need, including listing the pros and cons of the, each site such as accessibility for people without cars. Next slide, please. Economic development was further divided into three subcategories, business operations, workforce development, and the public realm, which also includes infrastructure and permitting. As you no doubt know, worker shortages, worker shortages and staff retention are now a central problem for economic development in the region. To address these, we developed a number of actions to improve workforce training to meet the needs of employers in the region. In addition, we identified actions to expand child care, which can be a real hurdle for working families in our region. Actions involve expanding small business assistance for child care providers who are small businesses themselves, of course, as well as working with municipalities to remove regulatory barriers to the establishment of new child care centers and smaller home-based facilities. Next slide. Uh, right. As you can see, uh, with three subcategories, economic development has the most number of goals, but also has the most number of actions in the plan. Next slide. Having affordability was already a serious issue in the area before COVID. During the pandemic, prices continued to rise while many households lost sources of income, making rent mortgage payments difficult 
particularly for lower income households and households with children to address this, as Jenny mentioned before. And then in God will be preparing a regional app. Next slide. <coughs> Access to healthy foods, including fresh produce, is already an issue for households without cars in our region. This, this grew when COVID made driving public transit to grocery stores potentially dangerous due to exposure to illness. Uh, next slide. To address this, we identified actions to assist local stores, farmers markets, and farm stands to accept SNAP, also called food stamps, and healthy incentive program food benefits. The application process and the technology required to accept these programs can be complicated for many small businesses and their hurdles to their wider acceptance in the region. Next slide. So what we're asking for tonight is the vote to approve this middle the final draft to the EDA. This draft will address any comments that are submitted to us by you all. Uh, by October 6th, as well as comments from the public that are submitted by October 6th. Information on how to submit comments is on the next slide. Uh, you can you either email them to me, call me, or you can view uh, the directions actually at nimtag.org slash ERRP is where you would download the full report if you haven't already looked at it. Uh, but there it also tells you to email the comments or call me. Uh, at the October Council meeting, there will be another vote to accept the final draft with all changes that address the comments. What you would be voting on right now is this. There may be changes based on comments, comments from the public or from council members. Uh, the final document will be approved and sent to the EDA. Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. I believe it was 150 or in the neighborhood of 150,000 from the EDA with matching grants from, or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, with matches from NIMCOG uh, from various sources. Is that right, Mark? No, no. 185, I believe. Yeah, sorry, matching is not the right word in that situation, <laughs> I guess. Smaller, in kind. There's, in, there's uh, 18. I think it's 18,500 in in kind match, in kind matching and another 12 or 17,000. So a total of 185? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That'd be the last guy. That's the only all these things that we made that yeah. No, we did, we're developing the the Fine. phase one and phase two there, and that's where we're, we are right now. Uh, the project ends in October. Mm -hmm. There may be um, yeah, there, there may be additional work after that. We're not sure. So what happens after? What happens after with all of your work? What Much of it will help. I'm sorry. No, what happens? What's the next step for the life of this plan? Much of it will be incorporated into the next into work from the SEDS, uh, as well as working. Uh, uh, some of the actions identified are. NIMCOG will work with other organizations to implement them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll be able to get additional funding to implement additional actions. Because there's, there's things in here that I, I want to, we didn't talk about the goals in, in detail, but that I want to do in my community. Mm -hmm. And I want to use this as sort of leverage, evidence, whatever it is, to um, support those efforts. So, you know, some of the, the broadband for all, vibrant public spaces, stuff like that. I think translates well to municipal work. I think some of well, some of the issues to so elected half work. Let me put that. Excuse me. Elected half. Work. No. <laughs> some of it, as I, as I said, will inform and contribute to the development of the comprehensive economic development strategy, but also um, it could come up in as the LPA projects next yeah. year and we can work with communities individually that way or as a group in some cases to the DLTA or something. Uh, but that's a good starting point to, for talking about. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. So Jeff, just to build on what Jane was saying, so would the next when this gets to the next step, would is the ex, is the expectation for communities to reach out to you or are we going to push this out to them? Because 
I'm just how do we how do we dove that till that's the two people leveraging off of it? The, the phase two of this project is the final deliverable under the, the uh, EDA ranch. So I'm sorry if there's confusion about the next steps. The next steps would be uh, potentially uh, applying for funding for implementation or uh, other work funded through something else from uh, finding uh, working with the communities. So the, the plan itself has an implementation uh, table at the end that identifies uh, principal implementation partners, including NINTAG and then other groups that NINTAG would be working with, including municipalities and uh, timeline based short term, medium term, long term, ongoing. A number of the, the, the uh, actions are things that NINTAG ideally would be working with the communities on. Okay. Other I, funding. I think I heard Jerry and then Jenny and then Chris. There, the, 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 go, go, Jenny. Okay, go, Jenny, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Jerry. <laughs> um, I was just going to quickly say that I mean, while phase two, of course, is wrapping up the work, this feeds into a lot of the other work. And if Chris, you still want to talk about how it relates more closely to SEDS, I'd like you to do that. Um, it's also really critical to our relationship with the Economic Development Administration as the partner to the EDA. We have a responsibility to carry forward a lot of these implementation items. Some of them are within our range of expertise and others will require us to work with a lot of partners in various communities in the region, but also regional partners who care about the same issues. Um, so we see ourselves as being an agent and facilitator and uh, of course, uh, helping to access funding is a piece of that, but there's going to be a lot of other elements to this to move it forward. And if it's okay, Jerry, that Chris just finish that off by talking about how it relates to SEDS. Sure. Uh, yes. uh, I, I did want to mention that because I'll probably be in just place in a few months because the next item that we're going to do is the SEDS annual report. And that includes a a schedule of goals for 2023, um, which will be done in January. So a lot of these, the short-term recommendations, the ones that are targeted for this year, which is a majority of them, will be integrated into that schedule of goals. And what I generally do with all of those goals is reach out to appropriate SEDS committee members and I believe uh, all of our communities have a representative, either a staff member or an economic development committee member. Um, those two might be an exception, but otherwise I believe we have a representative from each town. And uh, what I'll do for each quarterly meeting is reach out and ask about progress on those goals and whether NIMCOD can help. And uh, if NIMCOD can help, we will look for ways that we can provide technical assistance as a convener, as a facilitator, as an expert, or as uh, somebody who can link towns up with state and federal funding sources uh, to make sure that those recommendations have the best chance of implementation before the end of 2023. So that's kind of the process that we're beginning to adopt with the SEDS where each year at the beginning of the year, we list out a list of priorities and that will include the RPM priorities. And then every quarter we check in to see if folks are working on it, if they need help, and how we can help. Great. Thank you, Chris, for that clarification. Any more? This is an event question. Go ahead, please. This was a great presentation. Thank you very much for going over it. I, I guess I have a question about um, the EDA funds or the grants, and it sounds like it's closing with this deliverable. Is it, are they forecasted like future grant funding? You know, they have various funding opportunities throughout the year, mm -hmm. uh, but they're about specific subjects and specific projects are eligible. Uh, sometimes we are partners in applications. Yeah. 
for them, and sometimes we're the sole applicants. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a specific thing? In well, I was just thinking about so, like, I I work in a lot of grant fund things at like the federal level, and something that we always look for is like the deliverable is a plan, but then there might be an implementation grant that comes mm -hmm. some time after that, right? And so the plans that get accepted are the ones that have the commitment from the partners as well as the organization that's already embedded because they're looking for sustainability, right? They're looking for all of the, those things. And I'm sorry, I haven't downloaded the plan yet to take a look at it, but maybe that's already in there. But I was just thinking if there's a way to, I'll do that and then I'll provide comments or something. But if there's a way to show commitment from the partners in addition to NIMCOG, that makes a stronger plan so that when you're applying for future implementation grants, if that does come down the pipe, it's just easier for them to say yes. Oh, thank you, Dan. Move to the submission of final draft of the EDA. The EDA. Second. Motion made by George, seconded by Jane. Katrina? Andrew Deloria? Aye. Chris Rico? Aye. Pat Wilkins? Aye. George Zahra Aye. Phil Debo? Yes. Annie Rourke? Aye. Jerry Burchette? Aye. Chuck Walkovich? Aye. Joyce Morrow? Aye. Jane Hellman. Aye. Steve O'Neill. Aye. Anita Connor Hardware. Aye. Karen. Aye. Hold on. Thanks, Jeff. Looking looking forward to round two in October. Mm -hmm. All right. MBTA guide uh communities. All right. So um the final guidelines were issued, um, as most of you probably know. Um, that happened in August, and DHCD has been hosting a webinar, uh, some trainings by their partners at the state level, like the Citizens Housing and Planning Association, the Massachusetts Housing Partnership, um, NIMCOG, alongside uh, some of our uh, neighboring regional planning agencies. We are now one of the service providers. Um, and that could mean that if there's additional technical assistance requested from any of our communities, we would be available in order to provide those services. We're also learning um, a little bit more about different tools that the state is going to be using, um, including a tool that will help us to do some location assessment and mapping of sort of the, the, the it's basically modeling of what uh, the potential district might look like in each community. So there's there's a lot to come with that sort of work, but I wanted to give you a sense of one, the, the team of people right now um, who are gonna be working on this, which includes myself, Chris Hayes, um, Jeff Bowen and Carlin, who may or may not be in the room there, um, who's gonna be helping with all of the mapping, drafting of zoning, helping with public uh, participatory processes, um, doing analyses about existing conditions um, and any number of other things that might need to be done to get communities to become compliant with this requirement of state law. Um, there's really a range of different assistance that NIMCOG might provide. And so right now we're still working out some of what the scope of work might be in each one of the communities that requested our assistance. Those requests came in earlier this calendar year, and at that time, we didn't really know a lot about what the final guidelines would look like. The communities didn't know exactly what kind of support they would need. And we also didn't realize that there would be some interim action plan deadlines along the way as well. So um, we're still sort of adapting to what our exact scopes of, uh, scope of work is going to be in each of the four communities that requested our assistance. But um, we're also going to be available to any of our communities who are interested in both, uh, you know, under getting a little bit more support as you move forward, um, educating people in your communities about what, what is in the guidelines, what does it mean, what does it look like in your community, um, and answering any of those questions. So, for example, the other evening I went to Chelmsford and made a presentation to, at a joint meeting of the Select Board, Planning Board, and Finance Committee. Um, and that was a, 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 a meeting where I both made a presentation and there were a lot of questions um, and sharing that happened along the way about how to proceed, what to do next. Um, Evan Belansky was in the room as well as the director there who has a lot of ideas about how to move forward. 
So I think that we'll be able to be a nice partner in that process, but that's an example of how we can support uh, any of our communities in this process. I'm glad to answer any questions about specifics that people might have about the actual guidelines, but I mostly wanted to share that we're in the process of shaping what our technical assistance will specifically be in the four communities that requested it, to let you know the team of people, and to also let you know that we're here to support all of our communities uh, who have to comply with this law um, if there are any other needs or requests. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Any uh, follow-ups on this? I had to step away for a second. What, what were the four communities that had requested assistance so far? Bill Ricca. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the By the way, um, Drake it, um, and Tingsboro and Tewksbury. Is that right? Did I miss anybody? I hope, so. I hope it's Tewksbury. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. For a minute there, I thought. So Westford and Lowell requested assistance through um, the MassWorks program, but through the, the application process for other types of assistance through housing choice. So they, they may get assistance and then still ask our organization for support, but they went a, a slightly <clears throat> different route. Okay, great. Any other questions on this? Cool. Thank Thanks you. very much. Community Exchange, which is the, I think the rebranded community reports. Um, anyone have something to share? Steve, Steve, you should go on mute so we can hear your report. Can you hear me now? Of course. Thank you. Yeah, Pepper has been fortunate to receive uh, two grants. One was the uh, from MassDOT, one was for the uh, downtown Railroad Square District. Uh, it's called Share Streets and Spaces Grant. And uh, Planet Jeff again was, has done a lot of work, and that was a $200,000 grant. And then we received another grant for complete streets for the Rotary for $400,000 from, uh, from DOT. And I'm only bringing this up because both these projects will start in the springtime, but we had our first public presentation business meeting for the shared streets in the downtown railroad square last Thursday. And that went really well. We had a you know, small contingency of business owners there, but the idea there is basically improve the sidewalk uh, capabilities of the, of the downtown area and basically to, you know, make it safer for mobility, walking, biking, and uh, strengthen all, obviously commerce down that area because it needs a lot of help in terms of bringing more, goods and services to that area. Park has always been an issue. So we hope that this program, uh, Shared Streets, helps uh, the downtown area. And then we'll be moving on to complete streets at the Rotary, because that, that area needs to be modified quite a bit. You know, traffic calming and uh, safe uh, speed reductions and new sidewalks and crosswalks. That kind of links everything together between uh, the Peter Fitzpatrick School, the town field, and our main business uh, center district area down to the railroad square. So just thought I'd just mention those two and uh, we'll see how this progresses. We're looking forward to uh, uh, construction in the springtime. Thank you. Thank you, that's great. Other reports? Uh, yeah, and Please Chuck, uh, the other thing, I, ca I can't let Steve show me up, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the one thing that we're working on and uh, through Chris's Hayes' help, um, we're, we have the uh, 40R on our ballot uh, coming up at the fall town meeting. And, uh, you know, I'd like to get some input from any of uh, other towns that may have gone through a vote at town meeting and how they use or what they use to, to get it successfully passed in their town. Um, you know, we have a small group of opposition within Pepperell and uh, we want to make sure we're putting our best foot forward because we do have opportunities for the 40R within Pepperell. Uh, actually one builder is, really common, he's either going to put in a 40R or a 40B, and, and obviously a 40R would be more beneficial to the town of Pepperell. So we want to make sure that that passes. So any assistance that any council members have that can share with, with me would be would be great. You can either email me or, or give me a call. That, that'd be fantastic. I'll drop you a note, Chuck. We have some experience. Okay, great. Thank you. 
Hi, this is Joyce from Pepperell, and I'd like to piggyback on both what um, Chuck has just said and Stephen. One of my observations being involved in town politics for the past several years, as I have been, is the lack of communication. We don't have individuals who are communicators to be able to educate the residents as to facts versus fiction. And our naysayers are very good at giving out wrong information, which the majority of people will take as being the fact. And it's really important that we have some mechanism, whether it be through MCOG or through other towns, to be able to latch on to your know, best practices and benchmarks for educating the general public as to any changes or would be changes such as zoning and bylaws, which are for the economic development of the town and actually for the best interest of those looking for housing of any nature, whether it be the senior demographics or the um, affordable housing type people. But that is one of the biggest black holes that I have observed in town, especially Pepperell, that uh, it just seems that the naysayers get the voice out and the true, true facts and figures seem not to be able to get to the general public um, in an efficient and a timely ma manner. If there are any um, help that we can receive through MCOG or through any of the council members, we would certainly appreciate it. And I can also be reached by um, my email or um, phone call, which you have my information. Thank you. Jenny, if you have a solution to this, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I vote yes. No I vote yes. No uh, <laughs> education is key. And it's one of the um, most no, lacking. I, yeah. I hear you, Joyce and, and Chuck. Um, Steve, of course. Um, so Chris and I have been in close contact with Jenny as well as Andrew um, to talk with both, you know, from the town administrator perspective, but also from the town planner perspective about ways to move this forward. I had a, a nice meeting with both of them a few weeks ago now, probably. Um, and I'm planning to actually go back next week to meet with Jenny um, again to talk with her about this. I know she's hosting some meetings and all of that, but what I, so I'm, I'm glad to help and support in any way that I can, and Chris, I'm sure as well. Um, he's got a thumbs up. But I will also say that as part of the regional housing strategy that I would like to move ahead with eventually, that will include some educational and you know outreach elements that I think are that that could help to address the kinds of things that you're talking about, and that is not unique to Pepperell, but happens in in probably all of our communities. Um, so we're we're very interested in addressing that issue. I think that it's really you know the key. Um, so just glad to support you in any way that we can. Thank you. Um, at the last planning board, one of the um, suggestions I made to Jenny was to get a, um, a sheet that basically had two tables, one showing what the assets were for 40R and 40B, and to just include that in our next real estate tax bill. So that's already going out. The money is already being paid for posted. This will get to the tax payers in town, and it's an envelope that everybody receives, everybody opens, and I'm, I'm hoping that she'll follow through with that. Thank you. Are there other comments or reports or solutions to social media trolls? Yeah, unlisted phone numbers. Oh, that's, that's, mm -hmm. All right. this is it must be accessible by the to the general public, Stephen. You know better than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this is Anita. So unrelated to like housing or anything else, but I feel like there are some waves in Westford right now about the library expansion grant that we received. And so we had like a provisional grant, I think in July, but we learned that construction costs went up 52% mm -hmm. and that we're going from like, but we're going to be asking the challenge from like 11 million to like 24 or something. And it's just going to be a really rough few months of trying to figure out how we're going to, you know, how we're going to manage that. And I'm sure there are other towns there. Yeah. No. Are you, do you guys have it? I, don't know. I mean, we're just panicking, I guess. What is uh, so we're, Tuxbury is bringing to town meeting um, a new DPW project, and we're planning to do this inside the levy limit. Um, and so it was originally budgeted at $24 million. 
just prior to the pandemic, mm -hmm. went up to $34 million. And we have ratcheted it back to $26 million with value engineering and, and this, and we're not getting the Cadillac, we're getting the Chevy. And we're okay with that because it really needs to be done, but we're experiencing a lot of um, you know, interesting debate on it. So yeah, we've, but we've ratcheted it way back and just said, we're not doing the full, and we aren't gonna authorize the funding depending on how the economy, we're watching it very closely. I mean, we're closing $7 million in free cash. So we're okay financially, um, but we're watching it very closely. Um, Joyce, to your point, one thing that worked very well in Tewksbury to get some controversial things passed and to kind of beat the trolls is we had citizen groups target regular town meeting voters with postcards and you know privately fund a postcard that goes out to those voters and makes the case and you you know it's an election we're all elected so run it like an election be political worked very well in the past so we're also trying to pass retail marijuana in Tuxbury this time too. So everybody's on board with that. So we make a green postcard that's you know green DPW <laughs> marijuana vote green. <laughs> I I don't I don't make the postcard, but I know all the people who do. <laughs> so cool. Anyone else have something to share? Um, well, uh, we have is it the how the how school that's is that coming is it the end of this month Andrew beginning that 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 will be that will be done there. Um, that and the PHR will be complete by the end of October. Nice. So, so yeah, those the, two the Peggy Hand Rhythm com, uh, Athletic Complex is the PHR is short for. So yeah, those the, those two things, and then I think we're, we're probably uh, looks like conservation is looking at. Um, uh, a mixed use project. So that will be a, another uh, fun, fun thing uh, to, to, I guess with, uh, to, to Jerry's point, we try, we try our best to, for everyone to pull their, pull, pull, pull the weight. But as you can tell from, whether it's from Petrol or Tewksbury, it's uh, easier said than done. Um, so, but yeah, so that should be but I, I will throw out to the to the group that um we've resurrected the Billerica Town Center project, so we should keep you out of the little sun for the next several months. So you're welcome. Um, <laughs> you know, anything we can do? Yeah. Is that really? <laughs> he's already he's already made an appearance, George. He's already made. An appearance. <laughs> All right, let's move on before I get any more trouble. <laughs> You bring up the agenda. I just yeah. I don't know where mine went for some reason. All right, reminders and announcements. No, I guess I guess I, guess I, guess I can do this. Annual meeting is the nineteenth. Mark your calendar. And the next regular meeting will be on the sixteenth. Any other business that we need to cover that wasn't available? Just for a moment, Please? Andrew. Um, the annual meeting, we, uh, first I want to say thank you to Katrina for her work uh, in the middle of everything else going on, um, helping to organize and secure the location, secure the catering, um, and get all the details readied, um, as well as sending out all the invitations um, for the annual meeting. I just want to thank her again. I know I did that at the last meeting, but now everything is concluded with that. So thank you to Katrina for helping us with that, very much appreciated. I know it's a little different format than in prior years, so I'm looking forward to that. I also wanna say that we really need your help to get people to attend the meeting. So the more you can do to share the annual meeting invitation, um, hopefully all of you, of course, will be there. We are also working on the Zoom link for at least the business part of the meeting, but maybe for the rest of the meeting as well with uh, Justin and Katrina and I are gonna take a look at the site and figure out what we can what we can do about that. I I'm committed to doing something hybrid, but I we need to look at the how that might work um, a little bit better. I, a couple of you have asked me about that and we will follow up. Um, but I just really want to ask you to please help 
bring people to the meeting. It's really important. It's really going to be an interesting presentation from Jay Linehan, who is the president and CEO of the Greater Lowell Community Foundation. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. So I hope you are too, and I hope to see you all there. Cool, thank you. Any questions on that? And, uh, and that's, that invitation has been distributed. I think I just saw it on social media prior to the media, uh, the meeting commencing. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, we can have a motion to adjourn. That moved. Second. I'm going to take it as unanimous. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good night. 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 Have a good